Imagine waking up one morning and discovering that a river which once powered a nation is now so shallow you could almost walk across it. The Mississippi River, lifeblood of America's heartland, is dying before our eyes. Its water swinging from record-breaking lows to catastrophic floods with alarming frequency. Once a dynamic, free-flowing marvel, today it's a fragile canal held together by crumbling levees and aging dams. Across its 1,200,000 square mile basin, millions of people, farms, and industries depend on its waters. Yet recent years have exposed a terrifying truth. Human efforts to tame this mighty river have unleashed a crisis that may be too late to reverse. Let's dive into why the Mississippi is failing and what it means for all of us. A living river transformed. For thousands of years, the Mississippi River poured south from a glacial lake in northern Minnesota all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, meandering across a vast floodplain that could stretch for miles on either side. Snowmelt and seasonal rains once sent its waters spilling onto lowlands in a cycle that replenished wetlands, reinforced soil fertility, and supported a rich tapestry of fish, birds, mammals, and plants. Native peoples and early settlers navigated this network of tributaries, Ohio, Missouri, Arkansas, seeing the river as both life giver and highway. After the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, the U.S. recognized the basin's strategic value for commerce and westward expansion. Engineering the Canal The cataclysmic flood of 1927, triggered by relentless rainfall that raised the river's level by over 50 feet, breached levees at 145 locations and submerged 27,000 square miles across 10 states. Arkansans bore the brunt, facing months underwater, with depths exceeding 30 feet in places. In response, Congress launched the Mississippi River and Tributaries Project in 1928, aimed at controlling floods and improving navigation. Engineers built the world's longest levee network, dozens of floodways, and 29 lock and dam structures on the upper Mississippi raising average embankments from three feet to more than 24 feet by the 1980s. To maintain a reliable nine-foot channel for barges from Minneapolis to Baton Rouge. Downstream natural depths of 45 to 50 feet were further deepened in the 1980s and again in 2022 to enhance access for ocean-going vessels to New Orleans. From 1928 to today, Congress has invested about $13 billion in mr and which has prevented over $350 billion in flood damages, a roughly 27 to 1 return, and cemented the river's transformation into a massive shipping canal. An ecosystem starved. For millennia, the Mississippi's seasonal floods nurtured an estimated 80% of its natural floodplains, creating one of the world's most productive ecosystems. Wetlands, backwaters, and side channels provided nursery grounds for fish, resting areas for migratory birds along the Mississippi Flyway, and habitat for countless species. But by the 1980s, channelization, levee construction, and wetland drainage had cut off these vital habitats, drying out marshes and fragmenting ecosystems. Farming and urban expansion converted over 80% of floodplain forests into cropland and settlements, shearing away the river's environmental resilience. Today, the basin contends with pollution from chemical fertilizers, nitrogen and phosphorus, that wash off fields after storms. Roughly 40% of the watershed is impaired by nutrient or sediment pollution, making swimming and fishing unsafe in many areas and funneling excess nutrients into the Gulf of Mexico, where they fuel an annual dead zone. In 2024, that zone swelled to more than 6,700 square miles. Floods, droughts, and economic shocks. In recent years, the river has swung between extremes with dizzying speed, 
echoing a warming planet unable to settle into a new normal. After drought in 2022, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers maintained nine-foot navigation through persistent dredging until officially announcing the end of low water restrictions on July 4, February 2, 2024. Yet gauges along a 400-mile stretch from the Ohio River to Jackson fell below low water thresholds again in summer 2024, marking the second consecutive year of record lows. Barges were forced to reduce loads, driving shipping costs up by as much as 77% and imperiling farmers counting on affordable transport for their harvests. Meanwhile, heavy snowfall in early 2023 unleashed historic floods in the upper Midwest, inundating communities in Iowa and Illinois. By August, Louisiana and Mississippi endured sweltering heat and historic low flows underscoring that on this engineered system, a razor-thin margin separates abundance from crisis. Saltwater on the march. Beneath the drama of floods and drought, another threat lurks, saltwater intrusion. Because the Mississippi's channel sits below sea level in its lower reaches, a minimum flow is essential to keep Gulf salt at bay. Deepening the channel from 35 to 45 feet in the 1980s allowed saline water to travel over 100 miles inland between 1988 and 1990, tainting drinking supplies in New Orleans and Belshazz. Corrosive salt corrodes pipes and ruins irrigation systems. Emergency measures, including underwater sills, reverse osmosis units, and freshwater pipelines, have provided temporary relief but every low flow season risks new breaches of potable water supplies. In 2023, President Biden approved an emergency declaration to aid Louisiana communities. As sea levels rise and summer droughts lengthen, salt water may climb even further upstream, forcing boil water notices or water imports by barge. A river at a tipping point. Today, the Mississippi sits at a critical crossroads. The Gulf of Mexico's dead zone, where oxygen plummets and marine life perishes, reached roughly 6,705 square miles in 2024, the 12th largest area on record. Heavy rains in Minnesota and Wisconsin funneled record nutrient loads downstream, fueling algal blooms that suffocate oxygen. Globally, River flows hit all-time lows in 2023, the United Nations reported, with the Mississippi among those at historic lows, threatening water security for billions. Meanwhile, the EPA's latest assessment shows nitrogen pollution in U.S. rivers and streams remains virtually unchanged, stalling efforts to curb farm runoff. Glimmers of hope. Despite this dire picture, glimmers of hope emerge through collaborative restoration and adaptive management. The Mississippi River Cities and Towns Initiative champions reconnecting select floodplain areas to absorb high flows and ease levee stress. Pilot projects in Louisiana employ sediment diversions, controlled levee breaches, to rebuild marshes that buffer storm surges and improve water quality. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act of 2021 allocated federal funds for levy modernization and ecological restoration, signaling bipartisan support for system upgrades, though on-the-ground work moves slowly. Local communities in Iowa and Kentucky are planting cover crops on thousands of acres to trap nutrients before they reach tributaries. The EPA's Hypoxia Task Force aims to shrink the five-year average dead zone to under 1,900 square miles 2035, promoting buffer strips, cover crops, and better manure management. For centuries, the Mississippi River has carried our commerce, nourished our fields, and shaped our culture. Yet now it reminds us that nature always finds a way to reclaim balance. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Smash that like button if you learned something new. Share this video with friends. And don't forget to subscribe for more deep dive explorations of our planet's pressing issues.